let's talk about children identifying as cats. Genuinely, when I first saw this story, I just thought this was just, uh, it must have been a, an April the 1st story, but no, uh, it is June the 22nd, and children are identifying as cats, as horses, as the moon even, and teachers are playing along with the madness. Well, one head teacher, who definitely doesn't play along with any madness, is headmistress and founder of the free school, Michaela, uh, Catherine Burble Singh, who's also our former Social Mobility Commission chair. Good morning to you, Catherine. Morning. Thank you so much for joining us. I mean, these stories, they, they do make most parents think, oh, this is ridiculous. And these are one-offs, some silly school. We heard about the school, Rye College in East Sussex, where a 13-year-old girl was on tape arguing with her teacher about not wanting to basically acknowledge and accept that her school, one of her school colleagues, uh, could identify as a cat and she had to play along with it and refusing to accept that there were 80 different genders and the like. I have to say, round of applause for the girls standing up for biological reality and, and, and facts. But you, you, you spoke at a conference yesterday where you were saying that actually your worry is that this stuff, these aren't one-offs, are they? Yes, well, actually, it wasn't yesterday. It was about a month ago. Oh, apologies. Or earlier. And the fact is, uh, when, I, when I spoke and when I then talked, it was put on Twitter and so on, all these people said to me I was making this up and I was lying. And I've had this experience many times that when I say this is what's going on in the school system, people then say I'm making it up. Um, and then eventually we get to a point years later where people then say, well, we've always done this. And what do you mean? Of course, this is just normal. And that's my worry with this situation. I mean, um, the thing is, it's that it's it, uh, people might say, oh, but it's the schools, it's the schools. Look, there are also parents. Yeah. It, who are insisting that the schools should respect their child's right to identify as a cat. Cat seems to be the most popular uh, thing to identify as, from what I understand. And it isn't just that there'll just be one child in the school that's identifying as a cat. I mean, I know of teachers who have said to me that they work in schools where there will be a group of cats at the school. Um, I mean, okay, all the kids, all the kids genuinely believing that they are cats and everyone's playing along, or are they all, frankly, in my day, we'd have been taking the mick and going, look at these insane adults. Yeah. They're letting us get away with murder. Let's take the mick. Yeah. So and isn't that interesting? You, I thought it was really interesting when you introduced me to say about adult authority. I've been for decades saying how we have lost adult authority in the classroom and in our schools where uh, children are in charge as opposed to the teachers. And um, I think that's also the case sometimes with parents um, and that we are indulging children too much. So. Yeah. Yes, I think if it's a genuine mental health issue, then clearly we need to seek the support required for the child to help them deal with it. But I suspect many of them are just being silly. And um, unfortunately, we have a culture now where we tend to indulge children in the things that they are doing and saying, uh, as opposed to being authorities in the classroom and in the school. And so that's why we've got to this silly extent. Yeah. And again, saying, yes, of course you want to dress up as Superman or as a dog and woof and, and, and play, you know, when you're a toddler and you want to try on, you know, different clothing. That's fine. It's imagination is creative play. Right. OK. And now put on your school uniform and yes. get back to work because I'm in charge. Um, exactly. No, you're not a cat. You're pretending it, it, to be a cat, and that's yes. fun, but you're a kid. I'm a parent. I'm a teacher. I'm in charge. Let's now start doing our maths. Now, why are so many teachers and head teachers, and I would say parents, so wary of doing that? What, what happened? Yeah. Well, it's been slow over decades where we have lost the sense of authority from adults. We don't understand that it's our duty as adults to lead children, to push back when they are pushing against us, to hold the line. Um, yeah. We just don't do it anymore. And there's very much a culture of me, 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 and whatever oh, I yeah. think, however I feel, that's all that matters, as opposed to the us having a sense of duty towards others yes. and that us being part of a team, part of a community and a society. And not necessarily impose your feelings on everyone else all the time. I spoke at a conference right. last week where I had a woman shaking with anger at me with that wonderful liberal simpering smile where she said, are you saying that your facts trump my feelings? Right. To which I replied, yeah. yes, I'm absolutely saying that. I mean, I'm I, I was sort of, really? Is this even a legitimate question from, from somebody right. who apparently was a business leader? I found that quite terrifying. But this is the That's thing. Right. It's not just the, the identifying as cats is kind of the extreme version. There was genuinely a story about a child identifying as a horse, the teacher taking the horse out for a canter. I mean, 
this is mind-blowing madness, this is. Um, I mean, it, I mean, these, I mean, this, everyone should be sacked on the spot who's playing along with this. But we've also got the really serious issue of, you know, we haven't got children who are going to clinics who are giving them drugs to turn them into cats and, and uh, deforming their bodies and removing their breasts or their testicles or anything like that. Um, whereas we do have that when it comes to transgender children. Now, you and I both know that this is like, it's almost like a craze now. This is being driven. Lots of girls now, they're looking at YouTube. YouTube videos of other sort of unhappy children who are just un unhappy in their bodies, unhappy in their lives, may have uh, mental health issues, may have other issues, abuse issues in the past, who are looking at TikTok and, and YouTube stars going, you know, I, I had a mastectomy and now I'm so happy. I'm transforming into, into the opposite sex and now I'm a much happier person. This is, I mean, this is like almost sort of, you know, it's on acid, this stuff. It's on steroids, literally, in terms of how this is spreading through our schools. And it's on parents and teachers seem to be powerless to stop it. And in some cases, seem to be encouraging it. Well, the thing is, is that they are children. We must remember this. And so we don't let children have sex. We don't let children drink alcohol or smoke cigarettes yeah. uh, or drive a car. There are reasons for this. They are children and we need to look after them. And then when they turn 18, it's a different matter. But the fact is when they are young, we need to lead the way and we need to be the adult authority figure. We have lost that, unfortunately. And um, we are failing in our duty as parents and as teachers. Yeah. Um, okay, I mean, I think a lot of people feel that they're they're overpowered by this sort of avalanche of, of sort of madness. People worry yes. about being called a bigot, a transphobe, yes. or whatever it is. Yes, of course, there are 80 genders. Let's all play along with that madness. That's not true. I mean, it's just not true. Um, and, and people are afraid. People are afraid of losing their jobs. Um, yes. It's time for the government to step up, isn't it? And to do something. And it's all very well having a little statement from Rishi Sunak or his spokesman. We need action and we need it soon because we could see a Labour government in in the next year and they're going to go full throttle on this stuff. So what, what needs to be done? Well, guidance does need to be given to schools. I do feel for schools. I don't want, you know, I don't think schools should be attacked in any of this stuff. Um, they don't have guidance from the Department for Education. And then the, that poor teacher, you know, I don't agree at all with this idea of children having phones at all, let alone recording teachers in classrooms. Um, and I feel sorry for that teacher because uh, they're in an impossible situation. What, what do you do? I, I'd what sack that say? teacher on the spot, but that's just me. <laughs> that teacher, that teacher spoke to my child like that, and and, and that child was polite. My child, my child was rude to a teacher. That there'd be a lot of trouble at home as well. That child was really polite. That audio is extraordinary. That teacher would not stop doing the job on Friday. I mean, it was extraordinary. I just don't agree with the idea of children having no. phones in classrooms. That's all, you know. But but isn't but, it a good thing she did tape it? But it did reveal something. Absolutely, it has revealed something that has yeah. now allowed the public to recognise what is actually going on. Absolutely. Yes. Well, it's so good to talk to you. I know the, the sanity reigns at your school, the Michaela School, with magnificent results. I'm sure you're going to be getting some more great results in August this year with all your amazing young pupils. Social Mobility Commission, a former chair uh, and a headmistress of the Michaela Free School, Catherine Bubbleson. Thank you so much for joining us.